Trogeski saying it's highly unlikely that Bitcoin has seen its top. He writes the following. Bitcoin is still the best macro trade. Don't sweat the volatility. Troy's back with us for more. Troy, we've had an ongoing conversation about this over the last couple of weeks. Just build on that. Don't sweat the volatility. Why? Well, look, I mean, the reality of cryptocurrencies and even Bitcoin, which is by far and away the largest and deepest, is that if you make an investment today or you make an investment in early December like we did, you, you have to expect multiple 20 to 30 percent pullbacks in, in the bull market phase. And you also have to realize that perhaps all your analysis is incorrect and you don't have nearly as much upside this cycle as you did the previous two. Um, but that being said, I mean, the combination of still extraordinary money supply growth, you know, we still think we're in the early innings of the adoption cycle, as you know, you, you mentioned JP Morgan and Morgan Stanley and yeah. you know, Japanese gaming companies getting involved in and we're still this bull market is still younger than the last two in terms of length. And, you know, we could see many rational reasons why there's less upside this time around and it's a longer bull market. Um, but it's really hard to argue that it's going to be a shorter bull market. There's really no fact or, or basis for that, in our opinion. Troy, how do you make the decision how much of the portfolio should be dedicated to it and your tolerance levels around how much you allow it to grow into the overall portfolio? How are you making those decisions? What process do yeah, you go through? A, that's a great question, John. And so, look, initially, it, it's based on how much at cost you're willing to risk, like any investment, right? We view it as any other theme. If you're wrong on the thesis, if you have some type of exogenous shock, how much are you willing to risk? And, you know, for us, we had a, roughly a 5.5% at cost position at a weighted average price of about 18500 And then as it grows, for good reason, right, due to outperformance, um, you have to manage it relative to other exposures in your portfolio. And this is very important. You have to look at what your mandate is. And remember, our mandate is to generate the best absolute and risk-adjusted returns with as low a beta in correlation as possible to other assets. And, and so what we've seen is with the addition of Bitcoin, our, our beta was already low. It's gone down even further, even though our mark to market volatility, which we think uh, will be more in the 8 to 12 percent range versus 48 percent range has gone up. So it's an interesting dynamic, right? You're increasing expected return. You're increasing mark to market volatility, but you're also simultaneously marginally decreasing your beta in correlation to other assets. And so if that's your mandate, you're, you're continuing looking at that relative to other opportunities in the portfolio. And right now, again, when we look at other asset classes that are liquid, um, that we think have significant upside, we just don't see anything that could potentially double by the end of the year. Now, that's not to say yep. you know, individual stocks or late stage privates can as well. But this is the liquid market, right? You can evolve the position, you, you can trim it. Um, we've made the decision not to add to it further, even in pullbacks. Uh, but liquidity is a very important aspect of this as well. Troy, I'm very interested in the investor conditioning that we're going through right now with this yeah. asset class. And I just wonder what we'll think it's most useful for in the years to come as we go through that conditioning. And I think a great example is the Japanese yen. Anyone that comes into financial markets is often asked, why is the yen a safe haven? And you can sit there and talk about how it's used as a funding currency. You can talk about Japan's maybe net foreign asset position as well, how that's positive. But, Troy, when it comes down to it, it's because it works. That's ultimately why you consider the Japanese yen a safe haven, because it works. And I just wonder how Bitcoin will be used in the, in the broader portfolio as an asset class in the years to come as we go through that conditioning? Yeah, look, and that's where the parallels to gold are, are so important, at least from our perspective, in that, you know, gold was a completely orphaned, under-owned assets for, for years, really since the early to mid-80s through the late 90s. Um, and then it went through an adoption cycle. And, and you know, whether it's hedge funds or asset allocators decided, hey, you want zero, you want one, you want two, you want 3%. You know, we'd expect, again, as this marketplace matures, that Bitcoin will be the store of value winner, right? We don't ascribe much value from a transaction standpoint. We hope we're wrong. There are many smart people that think that has tremendous transaction value use. Um, but we think it's going to be the dominant store of value, the digital gold. And then Ethereum and, and uh, you know, digital uh, fiat currencies will be used more for actual transactions. That's how we see it shaking out. Um, and so you're quite, you're, you're, the question as an allocator right, is right now, if you're concerned about a currency debasement, if you're concerned about you know, the, the potential for more meaningful inflation, you, you obviously see asset inflation before your eyes and everything. You mentioned copper and, and weed and lumber, my goodness. Um, if you're concerned about that at all, 
you know, you, you don't have that many liquid choices. You know, one would obviously be gold, uh, two would be Bitcoin, and, and the marginal flow dollar is clearly going into crypto because gold already had its adoption cycle. Um, that being said, we are surprised gold is off from its August high. I, yep. I wouldn't have suspected that. Uh, you know, why, why sell gold to buy Bitcoin when you can just, there's so much cash out there. But that's been the price action, of course, the last four months. I'm trying to keep an open mind on a topic because it's become very tribal and quite aggressive on either side of the trade, as you know, Troy. 